Good day, everyone. So today we're talking about actually quite a nice part about construction methods. We're going into bridges. We'll talk about the principles, types of bridges, identify parts of the bridges and the role those parts of the bridges play uh, in that specific bridge. So going into the first part, principles of bridges. A bridge is a structure that enables a service to pass over another service or obstacle without disrupting either. If you want to hear or read a little bit more about that, it's in, on page 138. What types of bridges are there? The first type, arch bridges. This is a very important one or a very famous one in South Africa, actually. It is a curved structure of, constructed to span an opening. So remember that curved structure or an arched structure. It is found where crossing is over a steep valley as in the picture or where it will be costly to support the bridge at intervals. So if you had to support this bridge here with a couple of, with a couple of pillars or supports over here, Piers over there, it wouldn't work. It's just going to be so much more money than just supporting it with an arch. It can be constructed for uh, from the sides where two sections will meet in the center. The six sections are supported by cables which are removed after the completion of the arches. The road will be supported by the columns resting on the arches. So this picture is a very good example. The arches can also be constructed, constructed on sides and lowered into positions by cranes, depending on how far this is apart. So this picture is the Blokrans Bridge in the Western Cape. If you haven't been there, go check it out. It is pretty amazing. You can also bungee jump over there. I wouldn't try it, but you guys might. But yeah. A very good bridge or very cool bridge to go look at if you do have the time. This is other examples of arch bridges. Then you get suspension bridges. The bridges are where long spans are required as you can see in that section. It's a long span but it isn't as high up as which you would need with the arch bridges. The main cables are suspended on two tall towers on each side of the span and the road are suspended from ma main cables by other cables which are called hangers. So you'll see here's a support, there's another support on this side, let me go to this picture, there's another support here, then these are the main cables, okay, then you get these other little hangers in between that actually holds up the railway. Remember the, that because there's a other sort of bridge that looks very close to this this bridge as well. Then you get the cantilever bridge. The bridge decks are constructed from both ends to meet in the center where both sections are cantilevered over the supports. So a cantilever you see there's a, there's a support it basically hangs over and touches that side hangs over and touches that side. That's a cantilever. If you can't remember, just Google a bit of cantilevers, then you'll remember what that is. For all of these bridges, please read up a little bit more of them in your books so that if I do ask you SA questions that you actually do have a little bit more information. Then you get the Tokyo, this is the Tokyo bridge that I was talking about. That is a good example of cantilever bridges. Then you get a draw bridge or a movable bridge. It is found over a waterway where it isn't enough, there isn't enough clearance between the water and the other side, the underside, which is called the soffit of the bridge. The, digs, the deck sections are hinged at the supports whereby these sections can be raised or lowered to allow ships to pass through under here. So that is the tower bridge in London. Very famous bridge, very unique bridge as well. Then an incremental launching bridge. This bri the bridge deck is built in sections on one side of the span 
and then the sections are built in shutters as soon as they are done they are pushed out of the shutter the sections will rest on the next support or pier all sections will be joined by bars and pushed towards in or forward until they reach the opposite end so you'll see everything will be built maybe on this side and on this side you'll have a the other side of the section that you want to cross when you have one segment done you push it forward build the next one push it forward build the next one push it forward and that this is just an example of how how they did it in durban then you get a cable stayed bridge remember i told you to remember the difference between the two cable type of bridges this one all cables are directly suspended on tall towers or piers and the road is suspended from these cables. So that tower is directly connected to the road. Two or more towers, each with its own set of cables, support a section of the road. And that is the Nelson Mandela Bridge in South Africa. If you haven't seen it, it crosses a lot of railways, but I think most of you have seen that. Otherwise, you should go check it out when you are in Gauteng again. Okay, so after we get all the types, we go into the components of bridges. So you'll see that picture, there is quite a nice example to follow if, if you do go through this. Bridge abutments. So it's just the uh, support to the end of the bridge deck, and it is like an embankment or a a support wall or whatever you can call it but that is the abutment that is under the deck there the two types are available which are your wall abutment that we're going to be talking about wall abutment and your bank seat it's just a closer view of that picture here you get your two abutments or your um, box abutment then you get your piers. Your piers are basically your columns or your uh, supports under your bridge. These are vertical supports along the span of the bridge. So, so you get different types. You get your column piers, solid reinforcement piers, your portal frames, raked piers, and then V piers. V piers we actually see a lot on the highway. Then you get your superstructure. The superstructure is just a fancy name for the deck on the bridge. The deck is basically your roadway or where your railway goes or where people walk over. Remember, you get different types of bridges. So, yeah, this is basically your slab. And it includes a beam as well. Then you get bearings. They are included in the bridge construction to resist movement. Bearings are placed between supports abutments uh, and the deck criteria for designing of bridges so you have to look at these different things look in your manuals or your books as well to read up a little bit more of all of this but when you design a bridge you consider the normal load on the bridge so the weight on the bridge your span so the distance between your two points that you need to cover the wind loads, because in certain areas there's a lot more winds than in others. Uh, if you want to look at this, Google Galloping Gertie Bridge. Then you'll understand what I'm talking about. Galloping Gertie Bridge. Then you get your foundation types. That's something you need to consider. Are you building on sand? Are you building in water? What's the, found, what's the soil type? All that stuff. The height of the structure and the sitting of abutment piers and etc. The bridge materials are usually steel, reinforced concrete, or pre-stressed concrete. Read more about this in these pages, uh, but read on the, what the materials are used for, not really the history and all that type of stuff, more what the materials are used for. Factors that need to be considered when choosing the concrete or steel. Almost the same as the previous ones, that three, but then there's other two. So you get the span, the foundation conditions, the loads, but then you also need to consider the architectural considerations. What did the architect say it needs to be or how should it look? And then also how much money each one of those will cost. Precess concrete, refer to your book, page 150 to 151. Then the last slide, foundations. 
The choice of foundations depend on the type of subsoil, the depth of the subsoil, and then the costs. Sometimes you do need pile foundations uh, because your subsoil soil is poor. So do remember that when you do actually go into designing a bridge or your foundation of your bridge.